So live here in Parkdale. Um, so I put all this stuff up, but I'm not touch nothing because I don't know what the punny. But it's free, and you know, people here will take it because they're so in need. And so we're here in on Tyndall Avenue in Parkdale by these apartments. This apartment building, apparently, an apartment building where a lot of um, suicides happen. Apparently, so there's always fire trucks, ambulances every now and again. They block off the street because people are living rough. So down south there, towards close to the lake, which is closer to Springhurst, where I'm kind of based, is a little bit more, you know, the houses, a little bit more upscale-ish, and then it gets into sort of more privileged neighborhoods. But then when you come up um, to here, now it gets, you know, apartments, more apartment buildings. I like this one right and then you end up with this kind of stuff and in fact some people often come out here and also still try to sell their stuff so yeah so yeah so that's what we're talking about here in Parkdale and I'm heading to meet people for privileged life again brunch at one of the little boutique hotels called the Drake in the hood um, there's also the Gladstone which had a was already cool they had an Uber makeover even cooler because the original owners whose ideas, artist, more community social and community development owners, passed it on and now it's become more of a glamour glamour situation. So yeah, so you know, juggling, balancing, everything all at once in this hood in terms of how people live. And a lot of these homes too that you see are um, housing for um, support housing, including Housing for, um, what I say now, folks who are um, mental health, addictions, and also coming out of prison. And you know, I am happy to live in a neighborhood where it's mixed up like that because we don't believe in NIMBY. It actually is more IMBY in my backyard. Yeah, bring it on. Let's all live in community together because that's just the reality of life. And then we all make it together rather than this pretend thing where people want to go out to better neighborhoods and safer neighborhoods and neighborhoods that only look like them. This is King. We're crossing over there is Dufferin Street. And you can see that's the gateway to downtown Toronto. And you see the CN Tower. And then we've got our mayoral elections coming up so it's only been making her bid oh that's some kind of album oh, promo yeah so yeah all right i think that's enough you know i was overdo it and there's those condos that weren't there they were like uh, it was a little block of convenience stores and little service stores and now they're condo blocks i hope the bit the lower levels will be service oriented because they're god you know let's not become a suburban like neighborhood, which is what they turn downtown into sometimes. They build up all these residential spaces and then don't think to turn, even though that's not fair, they usually actually do. So sad that it shifts into is, you know, um, services for more affluent folks. So yeah, um, I always love this block. This is also support housing as well, right? Supportive housing is what I should say. See all kinds of things I'm getting rid of. Olivia and this lovely greenery landscape yard. Always love this yard. But I'm gonna stop this when I actually get to where my favorite house, probably in Toronto, uh, but in this neighborhood anyway. And it's on this street. So the street is called Gwyn. And um, yeah, Gwyn Avenue. It's one of my gateways to going home and I'm leaving Queen Street West. And yeah, and what they do on a lot of these houses and homes is that they usually do um, amazing Halloween presents. Okay, here we go. We're getting this. So this is, uh, uh, oh, this is new. I think this used to be all shrubbery, but because remember they were doing some kind of building, they cut it down, but you couldn't see the house before. But that's the one I, I'm loving, this one here. And see, and I love even the landscaping. Look at this entryway. Isn't that great how this is done? Yeah, stunning, eh? 
like Georgian mansion. And then here as well, you have this entryway to it. Now all this is, this tree has grown because it never used to be so big and massive. Yeah, I love it. And I think, I think what I was told was that whoever, somebody actually took it and turned it into one, bought the two houses side by side. Because I think originally it was like one Georgian home and then they took it and um, opened it up to be just one home, which is exactly what my goal would have been if I was able to have afforded or had that foresight because I probably could have afforded it at one point, but you know, didn't make the move. And now everything in the city is, but it's one of my favorite um, little places, even just the landscaping I actually even love more. Yeah, Toronto, streetcars. And then actually my second favorite on the street and probably again in the city is this one. I do like this one as well. All right, simple. But at this point in my life, I'm not looking to be in a house because, see, we'll drive with the portico for the car and then they're side by side. So, and I like it again in this hood where we live cheek and jowl with the recovering addicts, people managing their mental illnesses and people coming out of jail. And then we have this. And then some of these are also lovely as well. Got this one with the red. And then these little townhouses here. I'm actually gonna walk you to the top of the street so you'll see another set of townhouses that are kind of, I think they're protected by the city. And then many of these are also broken up into apartments. I like where I live, where the house, like a huge house like that, tends to be different floors and sometimes in parts of floors. So when I first we walked into my current apartment, I remember going, oh, how many units are on this floor? And then lo and behold, it's just one. So I got the whole floor. And then down there is some beautiful homes. I remember once I went down there on a hookup, a grinder hook, hookup, which didn't end up being much of a, or we didn't end up doing anything, we just chatted. Um, but a beautiful, beautiful home down on that street. And this street is called Melbourne. Yeah. And this one I also quite like in this corner. And I think this is also broken up. Yeah, but I love this. So we're coming next to the townhouses soon. Oh, interesting seeing a white man carrying that. I usually see brown and black people, mostly brown, in those careers. So it's striking to me to see this white male. And this is not the, I never even noticed that these are also kind of a poor my head townhouse kind of situations as well. I never really paid attention to that before. And again, this street is Gwyn. And it's clearly an Oliver Chow neighborhood. Because you know, these neighborhoods tend to be here. There's the start of the townhouses there. And this corner one with that beautiful tree. Love that tree. And then this. Again, love these landscape with lots of see I love trees. When I go to some suburban neighbors, that's what thing I just I can't abide is how untreed they are. But look at this. No, I know trees sometimes, the roots and all that can threaten the building, so they have to go, but, and there's all kinds of things with wires and electricity, depending on how the branches grow, or, or the trees die, or are unhealthy. So I get that, but I love, yeah. So there it is, this there. Look at that go, and then so all along that stretch and all the way through. Then you get this, oh, now this is like a suburban, <laughs> newer build, right? At some point, suburban-esque kind of thing. And then the continuation of these. And then you get this, a nice little sofa to lounge in during the day. This one too. 
build up. And you get this kind of thing. I don't know what's going on there, but it's cool. Looks like an enclosed backyard. And then, yeah. And then that townhouse situation continues. And then right over the Park Hill Community Health Centre, which serves a lot of homeless folks. And then this is the little alleyway that goes all the way down almost to, I think, Lansdowne-esque. You've got, this is the um, little public spot where they have events, and I've stumbled on events before, right? That's the community center, health center. Pride, happy pride. It's a night market. It's going here. All right. So now we're out in Queen Street West and heading to the Drake. All right, this is turning into a walk then from my Tyndall Street. straight west and going east and the buses transfer people to the streetcar yes, there's all kinds of construction road work even though based on the gradient you'd think it's the other way around. And this is the um, Dufferin Bridge over Queen and Dufferin where trains and there's probably one just now it's all just like go trains and I think there might be a via not sure ever it goes across there and I think the airport one services, condos, and then now you're going to see the hotels I talked about before coming up. And it's summer, but it is a little clippy, it's a little breezy breezy. So it's not really hot hot to just with a condo that's gone up so quickly. And this is Gladstone. I think I'm gonna cross because well, we just saw a train which was I think But it's 
it's in this little shot shots. Yeah, so I said you don't have You've got shot. Here, so this is the Gladstone Hotel. What I talked about that. Let's so become Uber to the point where cab is the inside now. Just to give you a little vibe on it. So it looks like this. It's become very glammed. And then you get, what do they do though? They're committed to art. So, you know, they do things like this. And you're hearing Afrobeat. And they've got a little bar here, a little restaurant cafe where they they do brunch here as well as all kinds of foods. And again, yeah, nice vibe. Hi. Hello. So this is like installations, like art installations, really. And then I love how now the check-in desks are look like that. They're no longer the big, huge thing. They used to have a thing here, a rotunda that looked like the old traditional check-in. But it was a discreet little corner. And the furnishings, can I tell you? And then there's a lovely bar cafe. I don't think it's open yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Melody Bar, it's not open, but it's lovely little lit up. And then, of course, there's our guy, Bob Marley. And Bowie, of course, can't lift him out. And yeah. Just to give you, here's my vibe today. A little layer, layer, because I'm going to trust the, the weather. All right. Now, here is this condo which has gone up very quickly. You know, I end up videotaping just like this where. You know, the mood, the movement, makes sense. Okay, so now I'm kind of sweating. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, the only thing that's annoying me today is that it's a Sunday is I have to go home and prep for a workshop tomorrow and send it materials to a client to review before I can chill for the evening. Hot chicken is right because nothing flavorful about it whatsoever. Feel a good place, Nuna? Good food? It's about um, one it's kind of interesting what he's doing. Art being created. It's kind of cool. Wow, very nice. Good old, this is a great little place in abstracto. Quite a few things in my house come from there. Oh, we're not out. 
outside. Look at the food. I'm just looking at your food because it looks really good. It is good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Enjoy. That's a brunch. Well, I can walk over this after. There they are. Everybody's looking so fly and fresh. Bodybuilder concept, like yesterday. Okay. On his birthday, like he's 44, like he, he's like, yo, what's up, dude? And then the post, and he's sexualized like a gay man. Yeah. You know, because he's a bodybuilder, so he doesn't have a shirt and stuff. And so, so does he identify as gay or how's he he's identify? No, and he's straight. Like okay. he likes women. Okay. He's a lesbian. He likes women. Okay. So now in the festival scene, especially with everybody in this like, but right, you're not queer though. Just black man. So that, so I'm like, dude, and that's how we talk. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, dude, what's up? What's up, bro? Um, I just don't think it can. Okay, let me just pause. As I say, pause. Pause. This is Odu. Yeah. I'm Douglas. What's up, nice Douglas? to meet you. Good to meet you. Hi. Good to see you, Good sir. To see. Everybody looks so looking fresh and fly. fly. As usual. Well, you all are looking fresh. You're all oh, clean yeah. shaven. You look so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, you cleaned I did. up. I did, yeah. All right. Not that you look scabby otherwise, but you look like you're really special and cleaned up, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I look more like Yeah. All right. So that's it. So Odu was like, pause, not say no more till I sign a release. Right? So, all right. You got me. I know, but I. Yeah, does this guy come sit down? He could be a stranger. I know your picture from Courtney. But also, you want to talk about some stuff that maybe. I want to Oh, no, no. I want to talk. No. I talked about this. No, this is for me an important public discourse in our community because we are constantly using verbiage that's supposed to be inclusive, but whenever we include, we then decide somebody else doesn't feel fit because we still work from an idea of lack of limitation and there's not enough room for everybody. But is, 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 a, male, is a female to male, um, cisgender passing trans person still not queer? Well, that's, I don't think to queer people they are. Queer people. They, they may not have I don't think, I, yeah, I don't think I'm queer to queer people. And I don't identify as queer, so that's cool. But it's just like, I don't identify as African American. I'm black. If you say I'm African American, all right, fine. I ain't got time to tell you why I'm black. Oh, but I'm, I'm black. I relate to that. Um, queerness, and, and queer is a really important dialogue because of how it's used and we don't clarify it. As a politic, it's one thing. And that, that is clear. I said, but it even, let's, let me say it like this. I was reading something and people talk about people who lived before and they identify them as queer. So it's like James Baldwin was a queer man or a queer man. And I said, well, I don't necessarily do that. And people say, why? I said, because in their time, queer was different. So I don't know if you subject them to that. I said, and people will say, well, do you call old black folk Negro? I said, well, sometimes I do. My grandfather called himself Negro until he died. So I, I do that. I said, but the other difference is, is that, again, queer had a certain connotation. And if they had the range of options you have now, I don't know if they would pick queer. So I'm not picking queer for them. So. And I know, you know, you're talking about a bunch of different things, but you know, for me at the end of the day, it does get to this, if we're going to be inclusive, then we are gonna to have to understand it, it will not only look like this. This is a, a trans man talking about being trans. And, and for me, it's more powerful because a lot of people don't know he's trans. So for him to put out a film, saying I am a trans man and this was my experience yeah but again 
the framework and lens, you know, and whether it's BIPOC, queer, queer, whatever, queer is also still through a lens of whiteness. So there just is no room for, you just too black. Like, you too black. You know, and, and, and again, black men, regardless of cis, trans, whatever these things we are supposed to be, if you just too black, um, the queer space be like, yo, I was him, and if you're not dealing drugs, if you're not coming to fuck them, you're like, what the fuck you know what you going here? Yeah. What you going here? So what does two black mean? What does two black you mean? Black I mean white spaces. For them, like, like their, their discomfort, and, and your, your, um, unconcerned about them being comfortable. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> like, so it's like, you know, right, right. Like, yo, what's up? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You're not code switching. Right, right. Oh, I didn't You're know not code you. Switching. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I may, I speak, you know, it's funny. So given the war yesterday, when I come up there, so they're not, then read the thing, you know, because I wrote the statement, read the thing, and people are like, ah, oh, you're speaking. Like, yeah, you know. Well, well, I talk. What do you mean? Well, because, it, you know, I'm from that era of, I would say I watched, I used to watch my mom ask the phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon. Girl, look. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that piece of well, I don't know who you are, and then I don't have to. I don't have to waste that on everybody. Like yeah. I'm a lot of different people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so this is who I am. What's up? But if I want to read something again, being accessible and wanting people to come on board. Oh, this is how I need everyone in this room to be on board yeah. because this is really important. Because I even tell people, I said, I don't really code switch. I get shit done. So for me, it's like, oh, this time I'm gonna get shit done in here. But you know it's me all the time. But if you don't need to know me like that, I probably don't give you that, you know, until. And I guess the same thing in, L so I'm gonna stop just saying here. LGBTQ, SGL, 2X, because that's what y'all don't have up here that I have to say sometimes. Like SGL? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you do, LGB you do LGBTQ SGL? Yeah. yeah. Or you do SGL as a separate thing from LGBTQ. Oh, wow, okay. Well, I, you know, I do it because, you know, the SGR is my people. I got to represent. But I mean, the black folk like that. I'm yeah. still gay, yeah. but they want to be SGR. I'm like, all right. We use SGR. Cleo Monago. I'm gay at the garage with gay. SGL, catacombs with gay. At the balls with gay. Watch Soul Train. Oh, they gay. Like, no. I came up with gay culture. So, I watch, and that's a, a thing I push back on the SGR idea. When people say it's built on because black folk didn't have gay culture, didn't have a gay voice. Now wait a minute, y'all can be that, but a lot of people use it like that, and I'm like, nah, nah. But it was a, it was a term for a particular period of time. Yeah, right, right, yeah. and yeah. like so one like you, black. Yeah. So then you're African American, but see when shit go down, we black again. <laughs> so that's why I'm just gonna stay gay, cause if shit gonna go down, we gonna be gay. I'm already gonna be here with my t-shirt. Like <laughs> but um, but my thing to to what we we're saying earlier, and at the same time, it's important for people who identify as SGL to be respected as SGL. Mm -hmm. For people who identify as queer to be respected as queer. Again, that's why I go to when we do one thing, we don't need to negate the other things if people yeah. if that's what they are. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Now we done. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, have no, to, I, I have to complete. Like, Bro, but I'm gonna need that. You That's invited that me. You, you invited me. No, I need it because to keep going. Like, there's gonna be some project where I'm gonna be like, yo, oh, let so me get that footage. And I'm gonna credit you as <laughs> no. Because yes, that's how my docs, you know, we come on the phone and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I want other people's stuff. Yeah, I know what I say. I hear this all the time. I'm just, <laughs> I hear me. I'm just loving the most yeah. shoot shirt, man. Oh, no, Moshu, okay. oh, I should have brought Why, Moshu? Why, for you. Because I had a different Moshu that you was like, Moshu, but this is oh, the black God. on black, so it doesn't, you know, this is the uh, southern. I have yeah. a Moshu sweatshirt and I have a Moshu. Yeah, I know. That's just more. So I said, let me let me come out in the Moshu. Moshu is still, oh, yeah. still uh, holding it down. Yo, y'all got Restoration Plaza now. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got, okay. uh, he got pushed out. And... Because he was on the Fulton? Yeah, on Fulton. And it's still on Fulton, you know, Restoration Plaza, but it's down. Mm -hmm. But you know, that neighborhood, he was the last shot standing, practically. Mm. Is and, that um, gentrification yeah. impacting? Yeah. yeah. But Restoration Plaza, you know, it is a hub. 
Did that Coon Bay, which is the African Dance Center. Okay. You had the Billy Holiday Theater. Oh, for who? For, for Black. Rip -off. Okay. So. Oh, yeah, if I don't say anything, Ab is Black. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I'm. <laughs> I'm so aware of this thing. I'm, right, right, I know. I'm right. doing the translation. Yeah, right, right. Oh, that's right, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. That happens all the time where people are speaking of this. Yeah. No, I, no, no, that makes sense. Like, yeah. we were talking about that so everyone understands. Uh oh. Let's get a joke. Oh, all right. Let's see if you, is it getting both of us? Um, no, no. No, it's. it's here we go. There we go. Here we go. What are we doing? It's both I got both of you. I got both of you. Did you? Yeah, always. But just establish, establish the context. Oh, my God. Yeah, just panning, just panning, just panning. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so there it is, all right? Sunday, um, June the 4th. 2023, and I said it's about 1.30ish um, by now, all right, here at, at the Drake Hotel in Toronto. Something happened in New York water. I'm looking at his teeth and I'm like, oh, okay. so wild. But I don't know what they look like. That's what I'm saying. Whatever they're, they look like is what they look No, I'm not, a, trust me, I'm not about to run to the bathroom and look. I'm not up for my phone and looking at it either. But I think, somebody took a picture while I said, dude. Now you could have like hit me up on that one. But um, it is what it is. We all have our things. Now we all have our things. So Douglas, do you 